quick intro before we start on this up and coming episodes. Very lucky to have Supreme CBD sponsoring us. I've been taking these products to help me feel more relaxed, help me sleep better, and just aches and pains from the gym. So it helps me more from a, a beneficial health point of view. And yeah, if you are interested, take a look at these guys. Matt, thanks for coming on again. Part two. No problem, mate. How's things? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, can't complain. Keep them busy. I've seen you being busy on Twitter. Uh, oh, always busy on Twitter, mate. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get, trying to get the, uh, the other side out there so that people can get a fair and balanced opinion. That's what life's all about. Yeah, exactly. Um, with, with that, I think we touched on previously when, when we came on. Um, how was that much of a struggle for you when you started to see the corrupt system, if you like, or everything that was doing with COVID and the vaccines? What was that like with your you know, colleagues and things in Sky, at Sky. Um, yeah, it was interested. I think uh, once you've, yeah, as you well know, once you've kind of seen stuff and it kind of dawns on you that actually the world that you thought was happening isn't really happening. Um, and the, it's really bizarre to then try and have conversations with other people who don't see what you see. Um, because as you well know, uh, everyone starts thinking that you're a bit crazy and, you know, you're a math conspiracy theorist, but not thinking that the government love you yeah. and that have got your best interests at heart. I mean, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> I mean, it, it, you, it's got to the point now where actually, if you think the government care about you, you are actually the conspiracy theorist yeah. and a little bit crazy. Um, that's where it's got to at this point in life. So yeah, it's been, it's been interesting, but I've, I've managed to not really fall out with anybody over it. You know, I haven't lost close friends or family members that, that don't speak to me because I have slightly different views to them. Um, I've still been able to, to maintain a bit of diplomacy and, <laughs> and not go not go too far and just know how far you can go in certain conversations really before kind of pull it back. Yeah. I think that's the, that is the point really, isn't it? Sometimes you can get sucked in and you go too far. <laughs> it makes, you know, everything's like blown out of a portion. But... I think um, I've seen on, on Twitter as well some of your views on, on things and then other members of the Sky team or whatever might get drawn into it. When you first started speaking about it, you would have had a lot of backlash because it's only just maybe the last year or 18 months, you it might be different, but I've seen a change in the narrative where people are being a little bit more switched on thinking, wow, these vaccines are actually full of shit. Yep. And what was going on with the lockdowns. But when you started speaking about it, it was very fresh. It was very raw. What kind of backlash were you having off people on social media? Oh yeah, there was there was a lot of, of negative replies to to all the tweets that I was I was putting out, and I felt like I was just trying to be balanced and objective and everything. Um, but obviously, uh, on social media, there's not a balance to be had. It's like you're either that side or you're that side, and if you're the opposite side, you're going to just tear into the person who's got a different opinion to you. You know that's how Twitter works. So yeah, it was it was probably. You know, when I first started, 95% of the responses were, you know, pretty negative towards me. Um, but as you say, the last 18 months has been a massive, massive turnaround in, in the proportion of positive responses that I've been getting and people that are now starting to, to wake up. And these are people that have taken vaccines and have, and have suddenly realised that maybe they're not all that they're cracked up to be. Um, and so, yeah, it's been, it's been chalk and cheese really over the last kind of year, 18 months. And you know, you know, with um, the vaccines and, and people are getting ill and people have died from these vaccines. Yeah. And of course, when you post, for example, or I might post and I say on my Twitter feed or other social media platforms where I might, we know what that is. No one wants to approach the elephant in the room. So why are the governments or people who have pushed this out when are they going to tar start taking responsibility and when are they going to have the consequences do you feel? Well, firstly, uh, th I don't think they'll ever take responsibility because uh, I believe this was de deliberate. Um, they knew what they were doing. don't have uh, any question about that, quite frankly. Um, will they ever be held to account? I think there is so much evidence coming out now that it might be a lot easier to hold them to account because if they've been found to be, you know, they've got all these indemnities in place from the government giving them you know a little cover for themselves and you know if it's found to be fraudulent if any of that the testing and any of the trials are found to be fraudulent then that cancels all contracts so at that point um 
then I think it will be a lot easier to hold these people to account. And I think there are, uh, are things happening all over the world where cases are starting to take place, where they're where they're looking to go after the pharmaceutical companies who have lied in their clinical trials. Mm. I, when you when you say that it was, it was deliberate, what do you think they were trying to achieve with that? Uh, what do I think they were trying to achieve? Um, I think they were trying to achieve a gradual decline in the population of the planet. Quite frankly, I don't, I don't see yeah. that there's any other conclusion you can come to after looking at, at all the evidence. You know, I've sat and watched Bill Gates uh, in a TED talk actually come out and say, if we do a really good job with vaccines and reproductive systems, we can reduce the population of the planet by 10 or 15%. Yeah, he said those words. I, 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 I've seen that. I've seen that. Yeah, and, how, and, I, and I've played that clip to, to people, and the mental gymnastics that goes on trying to justify what he is saying there is quite incredible. They always tell you what they're going to do. Yeah. And he's telling you in black and white that's what they're going to do. Yeah. So it's not difficult to put two or two together, but if you don't, if you're not that way of thinking, and you, and you think that Bill Gates is a really good bloke, and he's you know humanitarian uh then you know you're going to try and make any excuse possible for him to come out with that with that sentence that he says but there's no two ways about it they're telling you what they're doing and every, anything that he's he's, he's a touching psycho. it's not a good thing he's a psycho that is for sure he's not he's not all there he's not all there i watched his interviews there's something very very off with his body language he's not he's not well met in regards to him and other the other elites as well I think it's just come recently out that he's he went on Epstein Island over like thirty times or whatever it is. When do you? I still I can't believe I can't believe that Maxwell has gone to prison. Jeffrey Epstein will all have a debate whether he's still alive or not. <laughs> I still believe he's still alive. Who knows, mate? Who knows? So, it or he's just playing. Or it's just like an actor playing a role. Who knows what is going on with that? Yeah, but the guy Maxwell wants interest is she's she's been in prison yeah. for tra um, trafficking children to nobody to nobody. Yeah, which you know, how does that work? How do you how do you convict somebody of that and then not go after the people that she trafficked the children? To? Why are the people not being? Why are those names not being released? Yeah, why? Why do we not know who who these people are? We all know who they are. There's lists flying around yeah. all over the place. We know these people. We know what, that they've been to that island. They know what they're doing. They know that. The st stuff that was on that island, they were being filmed doing it, so they were all being blackmailed. Quite obviously, uh, it doesn't take a, a real genius to work that out. Um, so it's just obvious to me that there are powers high up that have the, the the power to stop people from going after the the actual people that were. Oh yeah, they run the street. They run everything. They they, 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 run everything. they they can cover everything up, um, and you know they, they've got it. They seem to have had it have it all sewn up, but. Um, I think more and more people are actually wising up to the fact that this is now going on, and I think they're I think they're running scared. In regards to that, why is if it's so public and as you say, there's there's a woman who's gone to prison for selling children to nobody. Yet when people do continue to speak about this, raising awareness because ultimately everyone wants the children to be safe. Not everyone. Not no. That is true. Not everyone. That's the problem. That is the problem. Not everybody wants. But it. my point is this: when when you do speak about these things, you have a lot of people say that happened X amount of months ago or last year. Just let it go. It's boring now. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm thinking: well, children are being trafficked and sold. But if that was your child, it'd be a different ball game. So they'd only care if things are happening to themselves. Yeah. So. When you say there's there's hired people who are running, what are they trying to get these celebrities to do? Or the we because we think the elites are kind of like Bill Gates, but there's going to be another no, level of yeah, that above. Yeah, for sure. And what do you think they're trying to trying to do with these with these people to blackmail them? As you say, well, they are the ones that uh, influence people on their social media. These yeah. people are, are massive followings on social media, and they can manipulate people's thoughts in society. And they do that by using the famous people. It's yeah. very simple. It's pretty simple. It's very simple. It, you know, it's not rocket science. They use the politicians. They use the biggest celebrities. They influence people's thoughts, and that's how they that's how they get away with what they do. And when they when they blackmail these celebrities, as we touched on before, as we know, they this high profile people who sell their soul. And can you explain, you know, what these people do to sell their soul? 
what do they do to sell their soul? Uh, I think they they sign up to a um, an agenda where they're happy to be rich and famous, uh, but as a part of that, they have to do as they're told in certain situations and follow certain uh, certain lines when things like a war happens and they they're told which sides to take. Uh, and I think that's uh, that looks pretty obvious to me, but I, I just it just seems bizarre to me that people find that so difficult to actually comprehend. Um, and I get it. I get that it's really difficult. If you're not, if you're not a nasty, evil person, it's really difficult to understand that there are some really nasty, evil psychopaths in this world. Yeah. And sadly for us, most of those psychopaths, they end up in positions of power because that's what they do. You know, us decent, normal, moral human beings, we don't covet great positions of power because we don't want to exercise control over other people. So the system is actually set up to encourage psychopaths yeah. to be taking control of things. And I guess that's that's the big problem that we've got. How do we change the system so that we get decent people in positions uh, where they can influence things as opposed to psychos? That's what I think, you know, with, as you mentioned that there, say for example, you've got, there's blatant celebrities that you see out there who are covering, you know, a lot with the symbolism, covering their eye, they're doing all these hand signs and, and so on. And you only look even recently with Vinicius Jr. where he's signed up to obviously Rockefeller with Jay-Z's company and Jay-Z's doing this and doing that. What are they, what are they trying to, what are they trying to show with all these symbols? Um, they're just showing their, their allegiance to their their god yeah who they who they worship uh you know and not not the the god that you know most christians will worship it's a very different form of worship that they have um and yeah i think we i think we shouldn't close our eyes to the fact uh that in this world there are you know satanic ritual abuse takes place um i think it's it's kind of left untouched really by the media largely you get the occasional little snippet in a in a bottom corner of a of a page seven or of a of a newspaper maybe, uh, and that's about as far as they'll go. Um, but but this stuff happens, and it's largely swept under the carpet. The media could could turn it into a big deal if they wanted to. That's what I've kind of realised over the last few years is is actually the stuff that's that you see in the media is just the stuff that's kind of they want you to see. Yeah, all the all the real nasty stuff. They keep hidden away. And that's what, well, the BBC, a prime example where I, I actually had a Met police officer who was on my previous episodes on, on the conversations. And he was saying that with the rituals that you're on about, the satanic rituals, where a mum would actually get pregnant that she was an addict, for example. She'd be identified as being, she's an addict, she needs money. And so these people would go out there say to her, when the baby's born, we'll give you £2,000, you give us the baby, you have your money. And that was identified by the, by the police and it was investigated for a long period of time. And the police officer um, took it to his bosses, saying, look, this is exactly what's going on. We've got all this grooming that is going on. He actually um, identified a very high-profile TV person who's probably on one of the biggest TV shows of, of our lifetime in, in Britain. And he is being protected just like what Jimmy Savile is. And he was literally about to put him down and his bosses said, no, you can't. And then that's when they got rid of him. He was having death threats and so on. So you have to think the police are trying to do their job, some of them the good ones, and they actually can't because they're then going to get fired because they're trying to stop the trafficking. So why are our governments and the police force, et cetera, et cetera why are the, why are they not protecting children and grooming? <laughs> because they're <laughs> they're part of that ring. So it's simple. It's as simple as that. It can't, it, there's no simpler way. I mean, I think it was Theresa May who there was a, an investigation going on to a paedophile ring in Westminster, and guess who shut that down? Theresa May got that investigation shut down. You know, we've had MPs who who have been proven to be paedophiles. Yeah, uh, and yet you have this investigation going on, and a prime minister comes in and he goes, "Stop that investigation. Why would they do that?" And then it's no questions asked. It's crazy, and the media just shut up about it. They don't, 
you know, we'll just sweep that under the carpet and talk about that anymore. Uh, and people go on with their daily lives and, and don't really care about it. And that's the, that's the sad bit really about it all. Talking about, you know, grooming and, and the trafficking, when we talk about false flags, for example, Ukraine, when these false flags are coming on with, you know, all the money being sent to Ukraine, billions and billions and billions of pounds, dollars, whatever it might be. We're struggling in this country. Everyone, if you look around, everyone is struggling to even probably put food on the table for their children, live day to day, week yeah. to week. Why are we sending our tax money over to other countries when we're fucked here? That's what blows my mind. Yeah, me too. And when that happens, I instantly think they're trafficking children. And when I did a bit of research on it, Ukraine is actually one of the biggest trafficking countries on the planet. Yep. And also recently as well, Israel are very high up on the list as one of trafficking children. I've done more research on the Ukraine than rather than Israel, but with these false flags and everything that's going on, causing the divides, as you mentioned before, they want to pick one size where you're p- picking Israel or, you know, Palestine, et cetera, et cetera. Why... Why, yeah, why are we sending so much money over to these countries and not living after our said It's just ridiculous. Um, I, I just don't, I don't understand how, how people can sit there and not realize that, that that money that they're sending out of the country uh, is money that could be used to, to actually help out the people in this country. And, and people go, oh, well, you can't, you know, it can't be hard. You've got to try and help other people. But hang on a minute. Here's the thing about that. If each individual country looked after its own people properly, there would be no need for any foreign aid anywhere. Yeah. Because everyone would look after their people properly, not take their tax money and siphon it off to their mates on BBE contracts and all that nonsense, track and trace, all those billions of quid. They would take that money and they would use it to improve our country, services in our country, give people a better standard of living, try and lower taxes, for a start, so that people can keep more of the money that they earn, uh, that would be a hell of a start. I mean, the whole taxation issue just just drives me mad because we are literally just taking our taxes and taking that money and sending it off to their mates over there somewhere yeah. in another country, and we'll never see that again. And our country just keeps getting worse and worse. Because every time there's a war or anything that happens abroad, it's like we have to get involved and we set. And then next, you know, every time that happens, it's been happening for decades is that our tax goes up. So something that happens in another country, yeah. we end up paying the price. Yeah. As that's that normal work in society of people. But I always think when we have all these, you know, everything that like foreigners coming over to our country right now, we're putting them in the hotels. I think there was a hotel closed down near me and it was closed down for normal residents to go and use the hotels, use the facilities, etc. They put all these people in, foreign people, and then making 10 million pounds more a year than what they would do if they were open. Again, that, our tax money is being used to, to pay for that. Or what they're doing it is they're borrowing more money, getting themselves in more debt. The government, the country is in more debt. Who are they borrowing that money off? So the people that they're borrowing that money off, they're the ones that control our country now because they've got our government over a barrel because the government owes them so much money. So why are we putting ourselves in that position? Mm. It's just crazy. And the amount of people that are coming in, um, this is just, I don't get, I don't get how it's so difficult to stop people from coming in. Or, you know, if these people aren't genuine, get them deported. Yeah. You know, nobody minds, you know, genuine people who are fleeing their countries because they're in danger of their life. Yeah. I get that, all that sort of stuff. That's, and uh, most people I would say, probably agree with that but we all know that that is not the case in the majority of these people that have come to this country yet our tax money have put them up in four-star hotels all over the country and then overpaying all those hotel owners to go shut your hotel you know, we'll look after you is, is a bribe which is basically what it is yeah. so all those hotel owners who have taken the bribes you're complicit in this you know okay you're getting paid very well you've taken the bribe that's fine but don't start moaning when stuff goes wrong. Um, so I don't know this, the whole thing with that situation doesn't sit comfortably with me. And I'm not, you know, it's not about having different cultures in, in countries, etc. I just feel that, say the British people went over abroad 
I don't think the British people would be looked after as well as as what we have foreigners coming over here. You know, there's 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 war heroes on the streets. There's there's people from the army who's got an addiction or they fall into addiction and they're homeless, and they're on the streets. Yet we we're housing foreign people before our own, if that makes sense. These people, are, these people have served our country. Yeah, uh, and yet we just turn our back on them and go, sorry, mate, can't have you. You you sit on the streets. Oh, that bloke is just. Come over on a little boat from France. We'll put you in a four-star hotel, give you a give you an iPhone, uh, a bit of spending money, and you crack off. But no, no, you fought for our country. No, see you later, mate. So that's How just that's all. Yeah, be with anyone is beyond. And they're just getting backhanders left, right, and centre just to make sure that this is happening. Why? Is that, how? Why is that happening? That's the big question. Um, nobody is. Nobody's really answered that. Nobody. Nobody in government has really addressed that. Uh, and they won't um, so it just leaves it open to speculation and people when it gets to that situation people will speculate that the worst is going to happen um, and who knows what they're there for going back to the Ukraine situation where billions of dollars have been getting sent from the US or pounds from the UK so much money has been fed there it's been fucking outrageous and then you have all these things that have slowly come out after the events and one that initially happened I thought it's not happening. Of course, innocent people die. I get that. In every event, innocent people die. Created by these psychopaths. But why is all the money getting sent there, for example? And then when it comes out about, well, they're actually one of the biggest countries who's trafficking kids. One of the most corrupt countries. One of the most corrupt countries. But people seem to be, oh, it's okay. That's okay. That happened, that happened like last year. That's okay. But they still got billions. Yeah. And, and you yeah, know, the fact that there's actual Nazis. Yeah. Um, fight for a bit of Ukraine, but people go, that's all right. Well, they're all right. They're okay to be Nazis because they're fighting against Russia. Come on, people. Yeah. Seriously. Wow. I mean... Do you think that people just think, well, that's not part of my life. It doesn't affect me. Then forget it. I think, that, I think that's a big thing um, about most of it is, is a lot of people just go, well, I'm all right. Yeah. I'm all right, so... I don't worry about that. Oh, they're not all right because our it's, tax is going it's, up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and it will come to their door at some point. It will come at some point. If you don't speak up about it, it will come to your door at some point and then it will be too late. So do you think everything that was go going on with COVID, do you think that Ukraine was a false flag to distract us from what is actually going on because they were starting to release certain documents at that particular time of investigations going on then? And then you... Then we go, we forget Ukraine, because Ukraine is just being forgotten now. <laughs> and now we're on to Israel. The crazy thing was, I think, I'm pretty sure the, the day every single COVID restriction was lifted in this country was the same day that the war started in Ukraine. The very same day. And, I, the, and that made me go, oh, hang God, here we go. Yeah. So, you know, the, the, the news cycle shifts from everything COVID, now it's everything Ukraine and Russia. And now people were starting to get a bit fatigued. There was a lot of polls coming out saying they didn't agree with what was going on. Don't stop sending money. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, people are getting a bit fed up with the Russia and Ukraine thing. What can we do now? Well, oh, oh, here's another war. Uh, and let's divide people again with, you know, pick a side, Israel, Hamas, all that stuff. And how people don't see through it, I, I don't really know. My views on Instagram got a lot of, I think probably more were switched on this time. Just because I felt personally, Israel has one of the best militaries on the planet. And what struck me instantly was, you've got people coming out on fucking hand gliders. Hand gliders. And I'm thinking, they could take you out at any given time. They were warned that there was yeah. going to be an attack coming. So if they were warned and they seen people coming across the border on a hand glider, they'd have been taken out. Which makes me think they were allowed to do it. That is, I mean, that... That's a logical conclusion to come to when you when you take a look at all the all the evidence. About but when you say that, and I have, I had ex teammates message me uh, that they're Jewish. All of that. Can you explain this? Can you explain that? And I'm like, no, that's that's my thought process. Innocent people are dying on both sides. Children being my main concern. Yeah. Because yeah. um, that's what I mainly speak about. But it was like they couldn't see that. It was like, well. Jewish people, they've had to deal with it for such and such long. And I'm like, well, Palestinians are dying. That's not okay. Exactly. Exactly. I think it's, it's important to have a balance and to have a bit of humanity about you that can see 
you take a step back. You don't take sides, take a step back and go, hang on a minute, there's innocent people dying on both sides here. What are we doing? What are we doing as, as humanity? Why, why are people not actually calling for ceasefires? In fact, people who are calling for ceasefires are actually getting absolutely crucified on yeah. social media. And, and, you know, when they go and protest for a, for a ceasefire, everyone's going, oh, it's a hate march, Suella Bradford. What the hell? Yeah. I mean, if people are calling for a ceasefire, that can't be a hate march. So the world is so inverted at, at the moment. Trade. People just trying to yeah. tell you that black's white and white is black. And you, you can't keep falling for it. You've got to, at some point, trust your own instinct on what you think is right and wrong. And don't get um, don't get bogged down in, in that double speak that these politicians talk about and the inversionism where they're just trying to turn everything that, that evil is good and good is evil. You, you can't be influenced by these so-called... What are your what are your thoughts on the attacks in Israel? Uh, I, well, I was very similar to you. I thought, hang on a minute, have they just flowed in on hand glasses? Yeah. And it just, it, it made no sense. It made no sense how it was so easy for them to get into Israel. Yeah. No sense whatsoever. So it, immediately I go, hang on. If that, they got such a great army and such, and that, you know, that part of the... Uh, of the country has been uh, surveilled so much, so much, and you just think, they, there's no way they could have done that. There's no, it's common sense, so there's no way they could have done that. So it was allowed to happen. I, I believe, it, yeah, it was allowed to happen. Yeah, I, and he was under pressure as well. The Netanyahu he was was getting all sorts of stuff yeah. from the Israeli people, and then just in time, and of course, you know, there's there's nothing better to unify a country, yeah, than to. Well, it away. makes sense, doesn't it? Because you, you have the attacks are coming out of our country. We need to protect our own. Anything from that's coming from that side, it's their fault, and we need to be unified. Yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're, I, I don't know. Listen, none of us know 100% for sure. Uh, I'd always caveat that. But I look at, we look at the evidence, and we come to logical conclusions. And, yeah, sometimes we might be wrong, um, but... As long as you go through the right thought process and, and think it through properly and come to a conclusion, then that's absolutely fine. If you come to a different conclusion than, than me from looking at the evidence, I don't mind. Yeah. As long as you've as long as you looked at the evidence and you've made up your own mind, that's absolutely fine. I'm not gonna fall out with you over it. But other people on the other side of the argument, they don't seem to get that. They're like, No, this is the way it's happened, and I can't be having anyone thinking differently. That's not how we live the that's not how we live in this world. You know, you've got to be a bit of tolerance around. Do you know what? I posted something on Twitter not so long ago. I wasn't active on Twitter so much, it was, but the last maybe few weeks I have, and one guy called me an absolute fucking lunatic, and I, his profile was in wearing a mask, and I thought, <laughs> that's where we're at. <laughs> yep. So, with all that that's going on with Israel and the Ukraine, I think I've seen actually a crisis actor, which... When I said this previously about Crisis Actor on maybe social media about two or three years ago, I got, I, even the newspapers brought it out and said, I'm a fucking rape and lunatic and blah, blah, blah. But they do have Crisis Actors. They do have Crisis Actors. That's I, actual, a thing. You've got a website. Yeah. You can book one of them. But they don't believe it. And they're just like, so anyway, what, there was someone from Israel that in the, obviously the terrible bombings and, sh and killings over there, that they were previously a crisis actor from maybe three to five years ago for something else. As, but when you speak about it, because it's such a su touchy subject, yeah. people do lose lives, as I keep saying, innocent people do lose lives. Yeah. But when you speak about that, it's like you're the, the lunatic, but you're just addressing facts. What I found out I had to over the last few years is that people's emotions override facts. Yeah. Facts don't matter to people's emotions. Yeah, that's what I've that's what I've come to understand over the last few years. You can't tell people facts if they're emotionally invested in some, in a different opinion. Yeah, and that's that's and the I always, reality of it. I always find it absolutely crazy that people are not interested in the taxes going up or innocent ki kids being groomed and trafficked and sold, and people are like, no, that's happening abroad. No, 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 it's it's happening it's right, 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 yeah, right under your nose. Yeah. And we don't seem to think it's happening. When you see young kids on the street, are you seeing... Because the media don't talk about yeah. it enough. And, and, and unless people... Unless it's talked about in the media, then people actually won't believe it. If they haven't heard it on the news, a lot of the population will not believe it's true because it hasn't been on the news. 
And then you see like a Netflix documentary coming out with the Beckhams and everyone's like buzzing off that or the Furies are talking about this kind of stuff. I'm thinking, well, you're not sharing so many stuff about kids being fucking trafficked. Mm. That's what blows my mind the most. With um, going back to that kind of stuff, when we obviously both play football, you obviously a much better player than me. <laughs> I see some of your goals. It's all right. subjective. Yeah. It's all subjective. No, no, no. Um, I'm, there's levels to the game. I understand that. So when you were playing, I, as we've touched on before, we've got the Germantria, people like to speak about numbers, symbolism, et cetera, et cetera. Over the last two years, I've probably taken a real interest in this because first off, it blew my fucking mind because I thought that's the sport that I absolutely loved. Mm. As a, a kid growing up, that's all I ever wanted to do. Innocent kid wanted to follow his dreams, to play football, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Same. And when I hear that sport is fixed, I just, I'm not, it took me a while to comprehend that kind of stuff. Mm. And then when I was shown ev evidence of certain videos and things, for example, there was a golfer not so long ago where the ball was actually stopped and it was literally still moving in the grass. And then there was also another video that I seen, which was on the, the PGA tour or wherever it might be. And a guy has hit a shot and it's landed in the buggy. A if, if you know when you've played golf and the holes are that big where you can put your balls in the buggy, yeah. it's landed straight in there. To hit that two, 300 yards to drop in there, it wouldn't happen. It can't just drop in a hole. <laughs> it's impossible. And also they were showing how balls, the golf balls, are kind of like controlled. So, say, for example, did. so yeah. say for example, Tiger Woods is putting, yeah. they show directly going into the hole like it's on like a remote control. So I've been shown these sort of things and I'm like, I love Tiger Woods. This Tiger blew my mind. Yeah. I need to get one of these remote yeah. control things. So my passage is awful. We right? need to get, <laughs> honestly, I'll come with a guy to you and we'll do it. So I've seen, so this is the kind of stuff that I've come across, whether I believe it or not, remains to be seen. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can do with Campbell's yeah. these days. So you've got to be really So Tiger Woods, careful. Yeah, Tiger Woods and Michael Jordan are the one, the two guys I'll look at and I'm like, I'm messy, obviously. And I'm like, yeah. So when people are saying sports fixed, that's taking me a step back. The same for the thing for basketball where they're thrown into the net and it gets stuck on top with a magnet ball, but they've, they've come out and said these things that they actually control the balls. And when you look at the symbolism and numbers, for example, you know, some guys who like win 33 shirts, they win like the, the most awards and so on. And it all kind of like makes sense. Uh, okay. So when you've played football, did you ever think that it was fixed or did you come across like any symbolism or anything like that? Not, not for one moment in, in my career did I ever feel like a football match was fixed. Nobody approached me. Um, the only incident I can remember was, was Bruce Grobelart was accused of letting goals uh, when he was in goal. And I played with Bruce at Southampton in one of the games, actually, um, I remember playing in and thinking, blimey, Bruce should have saved that, really. It was a goal against Coventry. I'll never forget it. And um, this is before any anything had come out in the newspapers about the accusations. I remember watching this goal go in thinking, blimey, he's, he's let that in. Right? And then a few weeks later, it came out in the newspapers that Bruce had these accusations against him and he was taken, taken bums. And one of the games in question was that game against Coventry a few weeks earlier. And I and I suddenly went, Jesus, I remember that. I remember at the time thinking that he's let that in. And this is one of the games that he's been accused of letting a goal in. I was like hmm. So that was the only that was the only dodgy bit of stuff that I kinda uh yeah, but kicking the ball out from <laughs> from a throw in yeah. From from the kickoff for the throw for uh, betting purposes. But um I don't I, I didn't get that. I, I really struggled to to understand that these football matches can be fixed, you know, by outside influences and geometry and all that stuff. Because I've I've seen a, a bit of stuff on that as well. It, it is fascinating when when somebody actually does a a real deep dive into it and starts predicting mm. what's going to happen in the games because of the numbers. It's it's just bizarre. But it, it blows my mind. Get it? How, I know how, my... how that could happen. How it can happen. I, I can't comprehend that. The only thing that I think is 
if someone predicts it before it's going to happen, then I think, okay, I stand up, I think, wow, you know your shit and it could be fixed. But if it's after the games, there's always probably ways you can say, oh, you can manipulate three, three days. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can manipulate what happened. But I think I, I got sent this from a friend of mine who researches all this. And it's crazy. He predicts like scores of 2-1 when someone, their partner, their wife might have died or they played a game X amount. And they, all the numbers seem to add up. And it's just like, it blows my mind because as we just mentioned, it's a sport that we played and loved. Yeah. I, and then... It's, and then they might wear a certain shirt color to be like a symbolism for certain months or it might wear a certain number. And I remember watching Chelsea a few months back. I think it, it might have been actually last season, I think it was. And a cross got slid in across the face of the box. And Kepa, I, I think he was in goal. And he's put his arm out. And I thought, he pulled his arm away for a tap-in from the other team. I think he might have been playing Man City or something. And the guy who crossed the ball was like a certain number then the, he pulled he was wearing like a green color kit or whatever it was i'm like thinking this because this guy's predict <laughs> this guy's predicted and i'm like it's blowing my mind because i as i i agree with you while i've gone and played by the matches i'm going out to win yeah, and i'm absolutely. sweating i'm working as hard yeah. as i can well i, I didn't know i was doing that but. yeah well you didn't mean to be too big and flick it over people but i just find it all crazy that stuff and it that is quite a stretch yeah, it is quite a stress. If you've played professional sport, <laughs> knowing that you're going out to try and win it, it's really difficult to comprehend that, you know, maybe outside influences are actually affecting the football match when you th you actually think, that's me that's affecting that match. But if I score a couple of screamers and we yeah. win, that's me that's affecting course, that match. Yeah. It's not some other geezer with a hidden hand doing it all. Yeah. That's my ability. 100%. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I, I'm agree. I, I agree until it's shown to me. And I think certain numbers, I'm all down with the numbers, but being like that way, I think there's always, there's always a way. And I think when going back to athletes as well and artists as well and all the elite people, when they sell their soul, they make sacrifices as well for people to lose their lives and their family. And one of the, or they sell their soul, i.e., David Beckham, for example, he's come out and spoke about, you know, he, he pushed the COVID agenda, he pushed the vaccines. He's then with Bill Gates, which literally, oh my God, I was just like, asshole. Wow. And, but then also before that, with the symbolism, he's, he covers his eye, his one eye, and he, he does certain things. And you have to think about all these great players that have come. Just, just on yeah. that point, why there? Because I, I have to say, it's really difficult to, I think you've got to have a lot of different things all come together to be able to pin that on somebody. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, the whole, you can be in a photo shoot, you can do a photo shoot for anything and the cameraman will go, oh, well, this one, just stick your yeah, head yeah. over your right. And you're in a photo shoot, you just do what you, what you do. Yeah. So some people I think have innocently had their, their hands taken with their, with their, uh, the photo taken with the hands. Pushed by on. probably, pushed by the, and they wouldn't know any different. They wouldn't know any different. Yeah. So I think I think you've got to be a little bit careful with, you know, if you if you see somebody who's had a photograph taken like that, you can't instantly just go. Yeah, it's not going to be oh, as one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, you've got to have a bit more evidence of that. I think. Yeah, hundred percent. I because as you say, they might be going to a photo shoot, and the cameraman might say, "Put your hand over right." It doesn't mean that he's part of that club. No. With David Beckham, for example, he's then with Bill Gates. He's pushed the vaccine. When you've seen that, what do you instantly think? Uh, my stomach turns when I saw that picture of, of Dave Beckham with Bill Gates. I mean, seriously, why? Why? You, you're a good footballer, David. You were, you were great. You were world class. You were a very, very good footballer at what you did. You were very good. Why are you getting involved? Why are you getting involved with that book for? Do you have any idea what crimes he's committed? Do you think he has to? Uh, yeah. So we're going power to... I think it's all part and parcel of, of that, of that circle of people at that level. Because when the Queen died, obviously this might be a touchy subject for people who like the royal family. I think they're corrupt as fuck, personally, because I just think they didn't, they've taken all the taxpayers' money, they live off that, then they say, oh, we bring a lot to the country, you don't, we just take off people. So I've never been one for the royal family. Never been a bit fat. So when the Queen died, and then David Beckham you see, oh my God, he's queued up for the Queen's funeral for X amount of hours. A superstar that he is, because there's not many famous people, more famous people on the planet than him. Let's not, you know, 
echo away from that. And then he's queuing like that. Do you think that is kind of some kind of ritual that he has to do? I, I think he could have been placed there um, to encourage others to go and maybe uh, kind of a, almost like a psychological operation um, where he seemed to be in the right place doing that, doing the right thing. Um, and it was interesting because you know, you've got somebody like him uh, who stands in queues and then you've got Philip and Holly who decided to jump the queues mm. uh, and got absolutely uh, hammered for it. <laughs> so it, it's, yeah, it's interesting how these people are placed in certain positions at certain times. Hey, listen, he might have chosen off of his own back to go and stand in a queue. He might not. He might have been told he had to go and do it. He might not. We don't really know. We, we can only speculate at the end of the day. With, um, as you mentioned then, Philip Schofield and so on with that young boy. Why? I find it absolutely cr So that was a well-known fact that he was acting that way for a long period of time. And look, I'm not... You could only look at him and you'd, you could, I, would, I thought he was gay straight away. And then you say he's married for X amount of years and so on and so on. But then he's, when he's grooming a child or he's grooming because he knew that child from a very young age. How are these people being protected for so long? I know what you said about... Easy. They're all in the same club. But when, when you, you've had a, other high profile people come out and speak against it, you know, Eamon Holmes, for example, the reason why him and his wife left that was because they didn't agree with what he was... They're, they're high profile people too. So when you've got figures like that coming out and talking about that and then knew about it, how that is allowed to happen. And then, and then you have them pushing the shit agenda where they put him, Gino DeCampo and um, Holly Willoughby, where they put those plastic coats on those nice and do each other. How, honestly, what I see now, because I don't watch the news or watch TV, I just thought they're getting paid to do this. Push it onto young people because people are actually influenced by being influenced by it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The older generation, no disrespect, they watch the news and they think that everything is happening what the news are telling them because they've been programmed a certain way for a long period of time. They don't know any different. So my question is, these celebrities, you even have football managers, Klopp, Guardiola were pushing the, the vaccines, which I'm, I'm like... And then so if you get an athlete, these younger players are having heart attacks, they're having this, they're having that. If they're having the problems and the football clubs have a duty of care to look after these, why are they not... Are these players protected by the by this, or uh, are the players protected by by what? By until so if they get have a heart attack or they or they die, and the vaccines have been pushed on them by the doctors. Because I, I think the the players are um, most of the players that, that took them, and I don't think it was as many as we were told because there was a, there was reports going around that oh, they were saying ninety ninety five percent of all Premier League players have been yeah. vaccinated. That's not what I was hearing. Um, I, I heard a, a very different story from that. Um, it, it was kind of, from what I heard, it was more like 50%. Um, now, I don't think those, what I, what I find really odd is it, is it was the doctors, mostly at these football clubs, from, from what I heard, the, the doctors and the physios that were actually pressurizing the players to take the, the vaccinations. Now, that for me is, is really odd. I mean, these are incredibly valuable pieces of, of, of flesh that yeah. these clubs have got build the yeah. control it's a business yeah and these are incredibly valuable to the business and yet the doctors and physios are actually encouraging them to take an experimental vaccine which is which is what it was it was yeah. under it was under um, emergency use authorization only yeah it was still experimental they had no idea what the long-term effects were how those physios and doctors can live with themselves for pushing that onto their footballers is beyond me. Not just not just them, but also everyone else in the population. Don't get me wrong, but we're just talking about footballers here. Um, I don't know how they sleep at night, especially when when you know players end up with myocarditis. You know, we, we saw an increase in in players collapsing on the field of play, and I was just gobsmacked because I was sitting there watching sport a lot as I do and seeing all these things happen, and I couldn't understand why nobody was bothered about it. Why no? Nobody at the FA, nobody at the PFA, nobody at FIFA Pro were looking at this and thinking, hang on a minute, that's our members. What? Why are we, why are we not investigating what's going on here? But don't they have a duty of care? Yeah, of course do they that, have yeah. a duty of care. That's yeah. why, I, that's why I, I ended up um, putting a post out on social media and I, and I copied in the FIFA Pro and the 
PFA because that's their that's their job to look after yeah their plan. and they weren't doing it mm. and then I, I put this tweet out and uh, you know actually just saying to them are you not a little bit concerned about it? you must be seeing what I'm seeing yeah um, uh, and within <laughs> within ten minutes of I'm actually sending the tweet out. I got a phone call from Bobby Barnes, uh, who I thought Bobby was still at the PFA, you know, but he wasn't. He was head of Fief Pro. So, uh, so yeah, within ten minutes, I got a phone call from him, and he's going, "Now, Matt, that, that tweet you just put out." And I was like, "Yeah." He said, "Oh, he said I'm head of Fief Pro now." And he said, um, "He said I just wanted to let you know." He said that there's nothing going on. He said this has always happened. Right. He said you just you just probably haven't heard about it before. And I was like, come on, Bobby, seriously. As in, you know, you're, you're the same age as me, roughly. You're a few years older, but our careers are probably about the same time. I said, come on, how many people did you see in your career that collapsed on the field of play with mm-hmm. a heart issue? Come on, tell me. Maybe what? I said, because our careers were about the same time. And he went, oh, there's Mark Vivian Poe, uh, Fabrice Mainber. And I went, let me stop you there, because both of those were after I retired. Yeah. I said, so I'll ask you again. Any others? And he went, no. That's all of it. Anything that happens with players, everyone goes to those two guys, don't they? Yeah. And they, and they remember them because they were, they were so rare. Yeah. Those incidences were so rare on a football pitch. And that's why people remember them. But it was just it was just happening. And not just to players on the pitch as well. Medical emergencies in the crowd at football matches. Yeah. How many of those have we seen in the last few years? Now, don't tell me there's not been a rise in those. And, and I had this conversation with the doctor at the FA because uh, I, I was just gobsmacked with what I was seeing and that everybody was turning a blind eye to it. Do you know Do you know the rise in percentage-wise of what the difference is of, you know, players collapsing? Um, I think I saw one study that put it at about 500% rise. That's crazy. Um, uh, now, this I think studies I think can be done yeah. and numbers yeah. can be manipulated. We all know that. So I don't, I'm not, suggesting that that is exactly the right figure but what i am suggesting is i watch a lot of sport on television yeah. i know what i see with my own eyes i saw a massive rise in issues not just footballers as well as other sports as yeah. well it wasn't just the footballers a massive rise in people collapsing on the field of play you know Djokovic, for example when he was going to the us open or australian open and he yeah. was not allowed to compete yeah for not having an experimental drug mm. how is that even allowed this shouldn't be allowed it because it is against everything that the Nuremberg Code stands for for a start um, uh, it was against every ethical argument you could possibly have it was shocking it was it was tyrannical governments just got drunk on power mm. and were trying to exert this power over and and over beings and Djokovic I thought did a really good job of uh going against the grain and taking his punishment, uh, not going to play it and, and not being forced into taking it just so that he can go win another Grand Slam. And in the end, he's been vindicated. He yeah. didn't go, he missed a couple, he came back, and when he was allowed, he's gone and started winning the tournament. So yeah. And the best way to, best way to do it. You know, say if he was a younger athlete and he wasn't who he was and won all those Grand Slams, yep. that could have been a different... Oh, it definitely would be a different thing. It wouldn't be a different thing. He would have been told, right, you need to have this vaccine or why you don't compete. Yeah. And that's what would have been happening. I know for a fact that certain football clubs as well, they were identifying certain players to go and sign them. You could only sign them if they were vaccinated. Yeah. But it is, it's bribery and coercion. Again, it's some crazy the law. Illegal. Absolutely illegal. And governments are were doing that to their own people when it was actually illegal to do it and nobody bats an eyelid. That's what blows my mind when people say the government has the best interests at heart. They don't. They, they don't want you to be healthy because no. sick people make these companies money. Absolutely. So they yeah, provide you the health of the health. Yeah, they provide you the, the, they provide you the problem and they give you the solution. It's crackers, mate. They're turning customers to cut non-stop. It is crackers. You know, the pharmaceutical industry, they really, it's, it, what people don't understand the pharmaceutical industry have no interest in curing people because if they did, they'd be out of business. Yeah, it's pretty sure billions and trillions, probably. I mean, it's just crackers. How people don't understand that is the pharmaceutical company. All they want to do is give you something that might treat a symptom, and they'll give you it 
with a proviso that all, oh, but this tablet that we're giving you for this, yeah, it's got a bit of a side effect, and your side effect might be this. So I tell you what, we got a tablet yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, I it's spoke constant. to I spoke to one of my friends a, f- uh, a few months back, and he had something go wrong with him, and uh, and he went, "Wow," well, he said, uh, I'm, not, "I'm not giving you." He said, oh, "They give me some tablets for for this issue, but um, that tablet had a bit of a side effect, so." They've given me this other one to counter that one. And that one that they gave me as a side effect of this, so they give me another tablet for that as well. Wow. And I was like, wow. At what point did you not go, how many more tablets do I have to take here? Yeah, it's a problem. How much, how much money are you making out of me? It's just incredible. It's, I like to find you. You're always to be a returning customer. It's, it's just bonkers, mate. Going back to Sky, when you left Sky, was that at the... Was that at the phase when you actually spoke openly about everything that was to do with COVID? Yeah, it was COVID and, and Black Lives Matter stuff. Okay. Which Black Lives Matter proved out to be a, a scam because... Uh, I Funny that. Yeah, I researched that. Funny that. And the woman... Nobody's apologised yeah. to me about that. I don't know. Really really have to give me loads of stick for, yeah. you know, being a racist for not wearing the Black Lives Matter badge. Yeah, you won't uh, get it. If I'd actually, you know, taken the time out to, to look at what they stood for and I didn't like what I saw and I stood by my principles. That, yeah. You know, they've, they've been shown to be a, a pretty corrupt organisation. Now, the Premier League then will go, oh, no, it's not, that's not what we, that's not what we were, what we were aligned to. Uh, They're fine. Okay. okay. Yeah. Why would you choose those three words if you didn't want to align it to that organisation yeah. who used those three words? Yeah. Uh, and so they, they've backpedalled unbelievably. Uh, and eventually, you know, everyone stopped wearing that badge and they had to kick the racism out, which strangely enough, I don't know if you know, is the kick racism badge out, they're wearing a lot now, uh, a lot of the pundits. Now, when I refused to wear the Black Lives Matter badge, I said to the producer at Sky, I said, look, I said, I'm not wearing that badge uh, again. So I had to wear it once. Um, I said, I'm not wearing that again. I said, but I'm quite happy to wear the kick the racism out badge. I, yeah, I ain't got a problem with that. So I've been involved in, all the kick races amount yeah. all the stuff that we did as footballers yeah all those initiatives that were going on Happ- happily did that I said so no problem i'll wear i'll wear one of those and and now funny enough no one's wearing the black lives matter badge if we get our bearers it's crazy isn't it but everyone just goes oh that is this here you wouldn't wear the black lives matter badge must be a racist yeah they'd whatever i bet they fucking did I just don't, it's, it's crazy to me. And then the, obviously when you watch documentaries or you research actually what was happening, the person who created that was living in a mansion in Miami. They bought like a three, five, three to $5 million mansion on the, on the waterfront. Yeah. Um, to go with Sky as well, did you, do you think that that was their, their excuse as well to get rid of you or did that? Well, I, gave, I gave them a couple of other excuses as well. <laughs> Which were? <laughs> uh, I, uh, yeah, my views on, on COVID at that point uh, were obviously going against the great. Um, I I made an observation that they weren't very happy, or, or one of the CEOs at one of the football clubs wasn't very happy with, because when they stopped the season in um, 2020, uh, and they were trying to restart the season back in, uh, in June, I think it was, and they were doing all the testing of all the clubs. So they would test everyone at every club and all the staff and at the end of that week they go oh this week we've had 12 positive tests out of like a thousand tests or whatever it was right and then that so that's what the premier league would do and then they no clubs you know you wouldn't know which clubs they come from unless the club themselves came out the next day and went yeah four of those positive cases yeah. were from us right so this started happening so they did the the weekly announcement and then the day after you get one or two clubs going, yeah, that was that was us. Four of those were from our club. I right? admitted that it was that. Now, all those clubs that were admitted to the positive test were either in the relegation zone or just above it, like all in danger of being relegated. And so uh, that they obviously didn't want the season to restart again. Yeah. Uh, they wanted it cancelled and we'll start again next Starting season. Go all, the, all the TV money again will go and we'll go again. So I just put out a tweet that said, isn't it strange how the only clubs that are admitting to having COVID cases are the ones that are in the relegation zone or just above it? Yeah. And that was my tweet. I, that's all I said. And then I got a phone call from, from the head of football at Sky and he went, uh, Matt, so we've had a complaint about your tweet from one of the CEOs. And I went, all right. I went, what tweet? I do it. 
He went, what about uh, the clubs in the relegation zone? I went, oh, right, so have you got it then? He went, yeah, yeah. I said, can you read this to me? And he read it to me. I went, can you tell me what's factually incorrect about that? <laughs> <laughs> and he went, uh, uh, nothing. And I went, there you go. Yeah, what are yeah, you phoning yeah. me for then? <laughs> he went, well, we had this complaint. I went, you can have a complaint. That's fine. I said, you can talk to me about it. If it's factually correct, I'll take it down. As it's not factually correct, I ain't taking it down. And that was it. And, now there's, and then a few weeks later, I was sacked. <laughs> were you? Jeez. What were their, their approach? Did they want younger people? Did they want like a bit more diverse or what did they want? Yeah, it was, it was uh, uh, partly a, a diversity thing as well. But I think they wanted to get rid of me. Uh, they sacked Phil Thompson and Charlie Nicholas on the same day, I think, to disguise the real reason. The real reason. Um, you know, I was the youngest one on that paddle. Normally, you kind of get the old ones drop off. Yeah. I knew it was kind of coming to the end of his time anyway. He kind of, they kind of said, we're going to phase you out over the next couple of years. Uh, so, he, so he kind of knew anyway. Charlie is obviously a bit older than me as well. Um, and so, yeah, when we, when we all got done on the same day, I was like, oh, that's interesting. They didn't want to sack me on my own, but they'll, they'll use a couple of other lads as a bit of cover for it. Um, and yeah, there was definitely a, a, a diversity angle to it. I don't think having... You know, if you if you watch television now, you watch any advert on the television, you watch any TV program now. You know, you don't you don't get just five middle aged white blokes sat on the television yeah. doing a program. It don't happen now. It, it can't happen. It's not allowed to happen. The, the, the television have uh, have got a policy. Um, you know, in you can watch any advert. It's it's laughable. They're actually having to put yeah. You know, they're having to design their adverts so that they can get something of each little category that they want in the advert. It's embarrassing. Just like tick box exercise. Yeah, sure. You know, with um, talking about the football side, I think Kevin Keegan came out the other day or the other week and said regarding um, he doesn't enjoy female commentators or if that's correct, I'm sure that's correct. What's your standpoint on that? Because I'm all for obviously the women's game being improved all down, all yeah. down with that. Absolutely. My what standpoint, I, my standpoint is, and always has been, if I'm if I'm watching women's football, I want to hear a pundit talking about it who's been in that arena and yeah. played women's football. Yeah, and has that experience that they can talk from. Now, if I'm watching men's football, I I want to hear it about a, from a bloke who has experience of being in that arena. Yeah, because say what you want. Uh, Two very different games. Yeah. Played in it okay, played by the same rules, but played in them very different manner physically. So I want to hear from people who have been in that arena telling me their experiences and, and how it is. Because I don't think as much as a uh, as a woman who, who knows football, and don't get me wrong, some of them are very knowledgeable about football, but they haven't been in that arena. They don't know the physicality of it. Totally different. Very, very different. So women for me, should be the pundits on the women's football and on the men's football, we should have men's pundits. And I, I, I find that quite a simple thing. And, uh, apparently that makes me a misogynist. Do you know what? I, I was, I think I, I seen something, I was flicking past a, a game a few weeks or months back, whenever it was, and it was, the women's game was on. And every guest in the studio was female, even the presenter was female. Mm. So everyone goes about their day, no, yeah. okay, that's fine. If that was all men, nobody worried that there wasn't a bloke there, did they? No, that'd be but, good. But on the men's side of things of the game, it's a problem for them not a female involved. Why have we come to that place that we're actually having to do that and uh, explain? We've come to that place because television uh, is trying to shape society in a way that that they want. They're not. They're not interested. See for. I think the fairest way to do it is actually to have proportional representation. Yeah. So look at the demographics that we've got in this country and you have that percentage of people on a, on a television show, as close as you can, obviously you're not going to get it exactly because there's small numbers. Um, but you, you, the television should be proportional to the society that are watching it. Yeah. It should be, but it's not. The proportions are way, way out of, out of track, completely off the scale. Uh, and it's social engineering. It's crazy to me because I, I think in comparison, the men's World Cup will b bring in billions, like three and a half to four billion dollars or pounds, wherever it might be. 
And the players, I think they receive around about six to eight percent of that. Whereas the women's World Cup, I think they, the revenue they brought in was around about four to five hundred million, and the the women received a higher percentage. So when you know people talk about equal pay, we want the same as blah blah. blah. The reality is numbers don't lie. When people want to speak about the numbers, absolutely. Well, what's stopping the men from going? Hang on a minute. The women are getting a way bigger proportion of their uh, income. Yeah. They're getting a way bigger proportion of it than, than we get. We want to be paid more. But then men would think, oh, that, yeah. people go mental. Yeah, they're, like, oh, they're greedy. Yeah. They're not here now. Absolutely. Yeah. But it is, it's got to be, it's got to be proportional to the, to the money you bring in. It could be proportional to the interest that's in it yeah. as well. And at the moment, I mean, you're looking at a lot of the, the WSL, the attendances uh, and stuff, it, it's not... It's not proportional to the men's game. No, nowhere near. No, nowhere, not even close. Uh, and yet, they are getting equal amount of time on on yeah. Sky Sports News now. Yeah, so if you notice, I thought it, it's you know there's that. I, I keep seeing fixtures coming up and go, oh, that'd be a good game, and then go, oh no, yeah, and it's the WSL. They've told us that. It's, it's, yeah. it's, like, it's like they're trying to merge the two things. I, I'm wondering how long it will be before we have you know mixed teams. It's pending. And that's what I think about the, the transgender movement is in like what place are we going to have maybe a male footballer then go and play the women's game because that would be just like, it's crazy to me. It, social engineering. Yeah, I just, I don't, I don't agree with it at all. I think that the, the agenda is being pushed. I think we've gone way past that now, whereas before, you know, you, you were taught certain ways and now everything's just too soft, too nice and... yeah. And it's just not not the way forward. World's gone mad, mate. World's gone mad. It's gone absolutely crazy. With um, with the with the sports side of things, and you know the transgender movement, where what are your thoughts on on that? My thoughts are: if you were born a bloke, you shouldn't be playing women's sports. Simple. Why are we so confused? I know, you don't have to elaborate on anything. Why are it's we so confused by that, though? We're not. We're not confused. But there was a there was a female athlete who competed. Um, you know, swimming events and was literally ranked around about 100th or 200th in the world in the men's sport, clearly not fucking good enough to compete there. Yeah. Then one become number one in the females. Cheating. Uh, it's, yeah, exactly it's cheating. that. That's as simple as that. There's no, there's no mass, massive debate that needs doing. If you're born a bloke, you don't, shouldn't be playing women's sports. It's simple as that. <laughs> it's, just, it's just not. There's no other it's common sense. Sense. Other way you can debate that. It's just crackers if you think that if you if, if you think that that's fair, if you're born a bloke to go compete against women, if you think that's fair, something not quite right in your psyche. Thank you. That with um to finish on on the last bit, where, where do you see any hope for if people are watching this and they you know it might seem doom and gloom everything that's gone on in the last three or four years because people have died, they've lost loved ones, they probably. They have one night to go to the funerals of their loved ones, etc. With all these restrictions, yeah. But where do you see hope in in terms of where the world is going to start to change? You know what? What what can you see happening? Uh, I, I see hope in the amount of people that are opening their eyes to the corruption that goes on. Uh, and I think as that number grows and grows, uh, I think it will be a, a lot easier then to implement change in society. Um, and that that number is definitely growing from my experience, my real world experiences of talking to people. You know, the conversations that I was having two or three years ago uh, are now being met very differently with responses now when I'm having those same conversations. Yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm not looked upon as uh, uh, some loony conspiracy theorist because you know I don't think that the government's got our best interests at heart, uh, and that you know these vaccines were experimental and they've not been doing what they said on the tee. But are these, you know, these people in politics and things that they're, they're not, uh, you know, elected, they're selected Would that, yeah. that's not going to change anytime soon. Not soon. Um, but I, I would hope in the long term that it's something that can be sorted out. I think, um, there's a, a bit of a movement going on to try to get the country to actually go down a different route of, of direct democracy, uh, which is what they've got in, in Switzerland where they do yeah. um, uh, things a little bit differently over there so that people get to have a, 
a vote on singular issues a lot more than we do in this country. You know, they have referendums and way more often than we've ever done here. Mm. Um, and, and so, as I said, the more and more people that are actually understanding that the system we've got is incredibly corrupt. So corrupt. Incredibly corrupt. The more and more people that understand that, then I think change comes, but it won't be quick. No, exactly. Well, I thank you for coming on again. Part two. We didn't, have no, we didn't have no interruption with the fire alarm just time. <laughs> but I appreciate you coming on and um, sharing all those experiences and, you know, and, and keep telling the truth out there. Well, it's my version of the truth. Um, who knows what's the real truth? That is true. Time will tell. <laughs> Time will tell. <laughs> Thank you very much. Pleasure, mate. Hi, guys. Um, I've started to use Supreme CBD. It's helped me greatly with aches and pains. I've been taking it before I go to bed at night. Um, it's helped me a lot better with my sleep. Um, I know a few friends as well who has taken it. It's helped them with depression and anxiety. So if you are interested and you are suffering with any of those conditions that I've said, then use uh, my code COTS40 and you'll be able to get 40% off any of these products.